We begin in Moscow, where Austria's Chancellor Karl Niehammer met earlier today with Russian President Vladimir Putin. In a statement, Niehammer called the meeting, quote, not a friendly visit. He addressed the alleged Russian war crimes in Bucha and other places. Niehammer visited Kiev and Bucha on Saturday, witnessing some of the devastation himself. The leaders spoke for just over an hour, and a spokesperson for the chancellor described the talks as, quote, very direct, open, and tough. This is the first visit by a European Union leader since Russia invaded Ukraine more than six weeks ago. The trip comes as Ukraine prepares for a major battle in its eastern region. It also comes a day after President Putin named a new leader for this attack. General Alexander Dvornikov is now in charge after Russian forces failed to capture Ukraine's capital city, Kyiv. This general is notorious for his conduct in Syria, where he bombed civilian districts. President Zelensky says Ukraine is preparing for Russia's assault in the east, and he defended, defined what winning the war would look like to my colleague Scott Pelley Sunday on CBS's 60 Minutes. Victory. First of all, our people would definitely feel victory. They will come back. The return of refugees is blood for the body of Ukraine. Without them, there's nothing. The bombardments would end. We would recover our territory. There would be no Russian soldiers in our country. Yes, I understand they will not withdraw from Crimea and will be arguing and negotiating for one territory or another in the south of our country, the Donbass. I know exactly what has to happen, after which we can say this is victory. But if you don't mind, I'm not going to talk about it just yet. Joining me now from Ukraine is CBS News foreign correspondent Holly Williams. Hi, Holly. Great to see you. So there have been a number of visits at this point by foreign leaders to Ukraine. And now we know Russia is engaging in its first in-person meeting of an EU leader. So what is the significance of all of these meetings and are they expected to move the needle at all? Well, Tanya, the visit of the Austrian Chancellor Karl Niehammer to Moscow is actually quite controversial. As you said, the first EU leader to meet with Putin in Moscow uh, since the invasion began. Although, remember, Emmanuel Macron of France visited him before the invasion to try and dissuade him. Austria is an officially neutral country. It is not a member of NATO. We understand that that meeting is already wrapped up in Moscow. Let's see uh, what comes of it, if anything. However, before Nehama went to visit Moscow, he came here to Ukraine. He went to the, the capital, Kiev, to see Ukraine's President Vladimir Zelensky. And he's, he is one now of a long line of world leaders who've made that journey by train to Kiev uh, to visit uh, President Zelensky, including recently Ursula von der Leyen, the President of the European Commission. And on Saturday, uh, the British uh, Prime Minister, uh, Boris, Je Boris Yeltsin. It's ob I'm so sorry, not Boris Yeltsin, Boris Johnson. Um, it's obviously highly symbolic what they're doing. It's a symbolic show of support for Ukraine. Uh, the Ukrainians are enormously grateful to support uh, from the West, uh, fr from Europe and the US. But remember, running alongside that is also a growing sense of frustration because the Ukrainians, not just President Zelensky, but all the way down to ordinary people, want more help from the EU and from the US. They want more weapons uh, so that they can better defend their country. On a personal note, what I found fascinating was the video of Boris Johnson mm. and President Zelensky walking you know, through the center of the city in Kyiv. I mean, they had a security detail with them, but they were walking around chatting with, with ordinary people. And that tells you something about how much the security situation in Kyiv has improved. Because remember, as far as we know, Zelensky has spent most of the last few weeks in a bunker. That was astonishing video, and it does uh, send a very strong message uh, seeing those two leaders walking through the streets of Kiev. I agree, Holly. So, uh, you know, as you know, Ukraine is preparing now for this major battle in the east. What are you hearing from Ukrainian soldiers as well as civilians? How is morale? Well, look. <laughs> There's an enormous amount of pain and grief in this in this country as Russian forces uh, have withdrawn or been fought back from some towns and villages. Um, the horrors they've discovered there, civilians killed, 
children killed, people apparently murdered execution style with their hands behind their backs uh, by Russian forces, allegations um, of rape. They are incredibly painful for Ukrainians. Um, you know, imagine that that was happening in your country. On the other hand, there's a very clear sense of pride in this country that Ukraine won the battle for Kyiv and Russian forces withdrew across that section of the border. And I think from what we've seen, morale is very high, both within the armed forces, the soldiers who we talk to, um, and ordinary citizens. Now, though, Russians, we understand, have been regrouping across the border um, and preparing for what is expected to be a major escalation in the east as Russia switches its focus out there. Um, we've seen these new satellite images showing what looks to be a more than eight-mile-long column of Russian vehicles vehicles headed to that section um, of the front line in the east. And, and military experts say that it may be much harder for Ukrainian forces to do what they did around Kyiv in the densely populated areas there, including guerrilla tactics. It may be much harder for them to use them or use them successfully in the less densely populated areas in the east. All right. Well, Holly Williams in Ukraine, thank you so much and please stay safe.